Back goes Falk. He steps up. He is going deep middle. It is intercepted on the deflection by McLeod. Rodney McLeod did it on the deflection. Coverage downfield. Russ is trying to throw it right into the slot. It's picked off. That was a very, very solid play by Rodney McLeod. Terrific play. That was a bang, bang play. Bang, bang, play. Very solid play by a very solid man. We are now joined by a safety out of Virginia, entering his ninth year in the league, fifth in the city of brotherly love. Please give it up for Super Bowl champion, Eagle safety, Rodney McLeod. Rodney, how you doing, bro? Hey, what's going on, man? I'm doing great. Good, good. Appreciate you joining me, man. We'll start off by talking about your involvement in social justice. You joined thousands of Philadelphians in uh, Black Lives Matter protests, and it stretched from City Hall all the way to the Art Museum steps. Uh, why was it important for you to get out and get involved? I mean, you have a lot going on. You could have easily stayed home, sent out a tweet, did something on social media, but you decided to take action. Why? Correct. Uh, the demonstration that the city of Philadelphia uh, displayed uh, a few, few weeks ago was very powerful. Um, and it was important for me to be a part of that for multiple reasons, uh, being a, a leader on my team, being a leader within my community, both here in Philadelphia and uh, my hometown, Maryland, and then in my family. Uh, I needed to take action and to show people the way, give some sort of direction and, uh, you know, encourage people to follow my lead. But also as a black man, uh, within, you know, the black community. I wanted to walk alongside my brothers and sisters um, in solidarity, uh, all, you know, allowing our voices to be heard uh, in a world where our voices are unheard or forced into silence. And so we all understand uh, what we're protesting and, and, and bringing awareness to. And unfortunately, um, that uh, started because of another life that we lost uh, within our own community. And so just bringing uh, the awareness to uh, the social just justice issues that do ally in the Black community and, and the fact that uh, change is needed. And so um, this isn't the first time that we protested. And why is police brutality, um, you know, a norm? And, and why do we have to uh, speak out on these issues? So... Um, it was it was great to see the fact that a such a large pro population of diversity, uh, diverse individuals of race, gender, uh, age, income, neighborhoods, it didn't matter. They were all out there for one uh, common purpose, and that's for equality and justice mm. for all. It was great to see, Rodney, and it's great to have you on talking about it. Your former teammate, Malcolm Jenkins, is now signed back with the Saints. He's also signed with CNN. How much are you going to miss him, not only as a leader on the field, but in the locker room, in the community? How much? Yeah, that's the difficult part about this business. Uh, you lose great players like Malcolm, and he will always be remembered here in uh, Philadelphia for the great play uh, that he displayed over his time here in Philly. Uh, for helping bring the first Super Bowl uh, to the city. But more importantly, you know, the work that he does off the field and affecting change, not only in the local community, but across the country. Uh, and you can see uh, his role has increased. Uh, I, I knew Malcolm as one of the first players to kind of speak out on a lot of these social justice issues. Uh, him alongside guys like Colin Kaepernick, and, um, you know, I really uh, followed suit uh, and kind of, you know, walked alongside him uh, for the mission. And so it's important now that you you mentioned him uh, having an active role on CNN now. Uh, he was awarded that because of his activism uh, for the issues. And I think it's important for his voice to be heard, not only for the league, but also for the African-American community. Uh, he has a, is a powerful voice. And um, he's displayed that countless times. So now with his departure, I feel like there, you know, falls a responsibility on myself to take uh, the lead on that and, ins and insert myself um, in, a, in a major way to inflict change. Ronnie, it's tremendous having you on again. Um, how, how does that work within the locker room then? So if you're now going to take on that mantle, maybe carry that flame from Malcolm Jenkins, you've got a lot of young teammates, you've got a lot of teammates who come from different backgrounds. 
How do you lead and what are those conversations like for an NFL team, especially if you're not there in person as we speak? Yes, uh, I think, you know, I think it's important for not only, you know, the NFL, but every respective job and work environment to have a lot of that dialogue now and those uncomfortable conversations. And some of that uh, started with us a few weeks ago um, after the initial protests happened. Uh, Jeffrey Laurie and Doug thought it was important for us to get out in front of it and to have an open forum. And a lot of teammates alongside myself spoke out. A lot of my conversations extended past the uh, team meeting. And I had uh, conversations with guys like Carson, um, Zach Ertz, Kelsey, uh, Jake Elliott, and, and Dallas Goddard. And, you know, two guys who we all know that spoke out in, in a very powerful way and made statements were Zach Ertz and Carson. And I challenged them to not mm -hmm. have their voices in there to now take action and um you know one thing that i observed from them was their willingness to listen and to also uh eager to learn more to get out there in the front lines and, and be a participant and to stand alongside um their brothers like myself and so I, I had a very candid conversation with dallas goddard where he you know told me that his first encounter with an african-american man was in college and to, it was mind-blowing for me to hear him say that, to think that uh, neighborhoods or, you know, people's upbringings exist because, you know, I come from a different uh, background where, you know, I've seen all different type of races and I've encountered um, them all and, and shared, you know, experiences with them. So you have to think that um, with there are plenty of Dallas Goddards that are out there who unfortunately don't get the opportunity to experience African-American man. And when they do is every, what is their perspective and how yeah. is that race portrayed or has it been portrayed either through the news or what they see on television or what they're talking about in, in their home. So you can see that there's a deeper root, um, deeper rooted issue. Um, but it's good to have those conversations on both sides because we're both getting informed um, about a lot. And then I also challenged, uh, I extended the invite to Jake Elliott to attend, attend a protest. He um, accepted and came out just to get a glimpse and what people are actually fighting for. So it, it's good, man. I've been like making a lot of progress lately. Mm. Love to hear that. I know you're a leader in the locker room. You keep emphasizing learning and being informed. And I know that you've always done a lot with your Change Our Future organization. You started a state of the art wellness center at only charter school in philadelphia and now you're doing something that i think is very important you're helping to launch an african-american history curriculum through that organization what are the goals and why is that so important to you it's very important uh because you know what i just spoke about uh in, in dollar goddard's situation uh giving people an opportunity to learn about the african-american evolution and Change Our Future has decided to make efforts in order to uh, implement this into the school curriculum uh, because we want to build our communities within the classroom. Uh, and what I mean by that is it benefits the African-American uh, children uh, who need a more comprehensive understanding of their own culture. And then we talk about the non-African-American uh, students this allows them to get a full totality of the American experience. Because let's be clear, what is history without the African-American experience? And so uh, for us, we feel that is an important need. After talking to many of educators uh, in multiple cities, the fact that African-American studies are kind of non-existent outside of Black History Month. So um, there is a issue there that we feel needs to be addressed. Um, and in order to get that done, um, there will uh, be needed, you know, funding, um, not only for the curriculum, but for educators, uh, you know, to allow this to take place. We want it to be a core class, um, hoping, you know, maybe it'll start as an elective, but we feel like this is something that is needed on a consistent basis. Um, and we want to roll this out in 10 school districts. So uh, we're making that push. Uh, we ask people to follow us, to stand behind, change our future and our mission uh, to get this done, whether volunteer or, or donating in some capacity.
<laughs> I love that. And, and Rodney, you're rocking the voice of the youth shirt. And I know that Saturday you're hosting a virtual youth football camp. And the mantra is winner's attitude. I can, I will, I am. Tell us about what the participants can expect at this camp. Yeah, man, it's going to be a great day. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, this camp this Saturday, like I normally do each and every summer. But this one is different because it comes at a, t at a time where it is needed. Uh, so much has been stripped away from a lot of our youth. Uh, school, uh, graduation, proms, um, sports, everything. Um, and so this is a moment, and we wanted to do something to keep them encouraged, keep them hopeful, keep their spirits alive uh, during this time. And so this is the way to do that, man. We know sports unifies us and, and so does a workout. It's, it's, it's us taking a moment and getting away from everything that is going on in society. We feel like there's just like this dark cloud over us. And, you know, now we've stepped in to shine some light for a couple hours to allow people to work out, um, hear some, uh, hear from some of my peers and it's going to be a great day. So, I'm glad, you know, that I'm one of the first athletes, I think I could say, uh, to get out in front of this, uh, to uh, have this, uh, you know, virtual camp and have uh, the, the, the children participate. So I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you for pouring into the youth. And because of so much of our history being lost, thank you for the African-American history curriculum that you're teaching, not just us, but also everybody else. Um, I'll tell you like somebody once told me, Rodney, football may be your job, but what you do off the field will be your most powerful work. I appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.